praise the Lord. Once again, Father has come greeting you all in the name of Jesus and welcoming you to receive the reflections for day 138. Hallelujah. For our reflections, we have 2 Samuel chapters 8 and 9, Psalm number 96 and 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Chapter 8 of 2 Samuel outlines the expansion of David's kingdom under the hand of the Lord himself. That's why chapter 8 verse 6b, the Lord made David victorious everywhere. Also in 14, the Lord made David victorious everywhere. So the Lord, uh, it is the work of the Lord. So all the time we should remember that. That's why it is repeated. And Israel's major enemies were all defeated as uh, David's kingdom extended north, south, east and west. Uh, a better explanation we will find in 1 Chronicles chapter 18 verses 1 to 13. Uh, actually, this conquering which is described in chapter 8 occurred before the events of chapter 7. That is why in chapter 7 verse 1, now when the king dwelt in his house and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies round about. So that means already all this uh, conquest, this battle, uh, this uh, uh, battles, everything had taken place before the events of uh, chapter 7. Now verse 2 of chapter 8 speaks about uh, a, a bloody battle with the Moabites. Actually, this attack and the bloodshed of Moabites represented a change from the good relationship David once enjoyed with the Moabite kings. Uh, because chapter 22 of 1 Samuel, verse 3, uh, you know, he is reaching Moab and said to the king of Moab, Please let my father and mother come and stay with you until I find out what God is going to do for me. At that time he was in exile or he was in a, a hiding out in different places. So that time, so David left his parents with the king of Moab and they were there. So uh, his parents lived in the, with the king of uh, Moab. That much relationship he had. But now we read something else. For example, verse 2, here we read, And he defeated Moab measured them with a line, making them lie down on the ground. Two lines he measured to be put to death, one full line to be spared. And the Moabites became servants to David and brought tribute. See, with the two lines measured, you know, this could mean that uh, David spared the young Moabites, children and the small ones, where Height was approximately one cord, you know. So, when he measured one, he spared. And the two, that means he executed the adults, where height was almost uh, approximately two cords. All of those people were uh, killed. And the smaller ones were spared. So, some of the historians believe David killed these people because they had they had either misbehaved or had killed David's parents whom David had entrusted the Moabite king when David was living, living in exile. Though we don't have any scriptural backups or evidence for this, it could be so. Because many historians say like that possibility. It could be so. And that would answer why so much blood was shed here. You know, so he killed many of them. Hallelujah. In chapter 9, it has the episode of David inviting, you know, Mephibosheth. We had already seen about that earlier. Uh, who was Mephibosheth? You know, he was the grandson of Saul. And uh, he was invited to the palace of David and uh, he was honored there by giving him, you know, permanent shelter with David. Thus, he was proving, David is proving his own greatness and his righteousness. It was a very 
a great gesture of uh, you know uh, righteousness from his part wherein he honored the grandson of his uh, enemy who wanted to kill himself you know that soul so that is so much appreciate uh, should be appreciated from the life of uh, uh, david only a man who is you know honoring the lord loving the lord can do such a great act praise god now let us come to reflect on psalm number 96 uh, god is the supreme king there is no other attributed in the hebrew text of this psalm but psalm number 96 it contains the middle verses of the song that david sang uh, during the entrance of the ark of the covenant to jerusalem you know about that incident we just had seen these days from second samuel but when the same incident is described in first chronicles chapter 16 as i said you know all these events that we find in second samuel we will find again in first chronicles there while solemnly bringing the ark of the covenant to jerusalem david is making a beautiful song you know he's singing a song it's a psalm and that psalm the middle part is exactly psalm number 96 Hallelujah. First part is Psalm number 105. There it is. But here, you know, so verses 23 to 33 in 1st Chronicle chapter 16 is exactly this. So suggesting that David was the author. So the background is very clear when he was bringing the, uh, the Ark of the Covenant to, the, uh, to Jerusalem. Hallelujah. now verses 1 to 3 so worshiping god with a new song every day every day worship that's why we proclaim every day the good news that he has saved us you know never stop proclaiming the good news of salvation you know it's an assurance you know that joy is because of the assurance that there is a way of salvation provided for us that's why we are happy all the day every time forever because we are saved sins are forgiven we have a god who wants to save us uh, hallelujah so that is to be proclaimed constantly through our worshiping through our praising our uh, verses 4 to 6 why god deserves praise so because he is great he is to be feared uh, or above all gods because they are all idols our god is living god he has made he has created the heavens he alone is god glory and majesty surround him then then he is marked by power and beauty so these are all reasons why we should praise him why he deserves praise then verses 7 to 9 here is calling the entire entire world to glorify god to give glory give glory uh, to the lord entire world should glorify you know here one beautiful thing is give glory you know bring an offering and come into his temple so worship of god is described as our bringing something or giving something to the lord rather than you know our coming to god to get something from him usually our concept our idea of prayer is to ask something we go when we are sick we go to the lord when we are sad we go to the lord when we are in difficulty we go to the lord when we need a job we go to the lord when we need to pass some exam so we need to get something so we go but here uh, you know scripture is giving an, a different idea that you know worship means you know to give the prayer means to give we go to the lord to give we should, you know that is the primary concern what you have to give him because he is the all he has given you everything you have received free of cost give it freely that is called a prayer and worship so we give our time we give our attention we give our worship we give our you know surrender that means we surrender ownership we give to the lord and we give what is that our service our resources our sufferings and much more we give ourselves present your body 
as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable that should be your spiritual worship present give your body that is romans chapter at uh, 12 verse 1 and 2 hallelujah so uh, this giving is the central aspect of worship then verse 10 says you know what you should say among the nation say to all the nation the lord is king ya yeah. proclaim he is god everything belongs to him he is the author he is the owner earth is set firmly in place and cannot be moved he will judge the peoples with justice that you need to proclaim then verse 11 to 13 you know message of joy to all creation message of joy to all creation here fields and everything in your trees wood should shout for joy everything the entire world should rejoice see the thought that inanimate nature will share in the joy of the redeemed you know redeemed to humanity when we are redeemed when we experience the presence of the lord his salvation in us we will be joyful and our joy will be communicated to the entire universe not only in human beings but even the inanimate nature you know even the trees the river and everything everything will rejoice that's a beautiful message from the scripture st paul had this concept in mind when he said in romans chapter 8 He said, verse twenty-one, eight twenty-one, that creation itself would one day be set free from its slavery to to decay and would share the glorious freedom of the children of God. See, creation, the entire creation is looking towards that. It's under some kind of slavery, slavery to decay, and so it would share the glorious freedom, freedom of the children of God. That is why joy. the entire creation will experience that freedom is a beautiful theology and spirituality all together praise god hallelujah now coming to the fifth chapter of uh, st paul's letter to or first letter to corinthians here in this chapter paul is confronting the morality in the corinthian church apparently someone was having an ongoing sexual relationship with his his own stepmother the woman involved must not be a christian for she is not addressed here at all so paul understood that this kind of incestuous relationship was considered a taboo even among the uh, among the pagans of their culture yet the corinthian christians seem accepting this behavior verse 2 you know the reaction of the corinthian church to this particular sin st paul says how then can you be proud on the contrary you should be filled with the sadness and the man has to be done such a, the man who has done such a thing should be expelled from your fellowship see as bad as the sin itself was you know paul was more concerned that the corinthian christians seem to take the sin very lightly and they were you know unconcerned about such a behavior from from this man so the corinthian christians probably allowed this in the name of maybe tolerance uh, they probably said to themselves look how loving we are we accept this brother just as he is look how we op- how open minded we are they might be thinking you know see we should never underestimate what uh, people will allow in the name of open mindedness today in the name of open mindedness abortion homosexuality all these things yeah they are just uh, taken you know as accepted like but paul saint paul doesn't allow such a behavior so his prescription is uh, seen from chapter verses 3 and even though i am far away from you in body still i am there with you in spirit as though i were there with you i have in the name of our lord jesus already passed judgment on this man who has done this terrible thing as you meet together i meet with you in my spirit by the power of our lord jesus present with us you are to hand this man over to satan for his body to be destroyed so that his spirit may be saved in the day of the lord i know you surely will have some confusion with regard to this first thing is uh he is saying i have passed judgment is paul disobeying what the lord said you know not to pass judgment 
in matthew chapter 7 125 we read you are not to judge paul is not being disobedient even in the slightest way he is using his god given authority to correct and to expose the sin from the community so that it may not be communicated to others it may not destroy the community so is a timely intervention so he is not actually uh, you know uh, judging as such like the word of god says or uh, uh, denies permission to judge for example in matthew chapter 7 it forbids hypocritical judgment uh, in judging others by a standard that we ourselves do not want to be judged by while we are not to judge one another uh, their activities their ministries their words but we are certainly expected to be honest about each other's conduct you know that's why st paul uh, writing to ephesians we read like this ephesians chapter 4 words 11 sorry chapter 5 words 11 have nothing to do with the worthless things that people do things that belong to the darkness instead bring them out to the light expose them you should expose them if not what will happen a uh, little sin influence a little sin influences the entire group that is why a little bit of yeast uh, it will affects the entire uh you know and her group and her uh, so that's what word of god says sin will affect others we are to live a perpetual passover feast actually in holiness so that is the principle of christian separation he is explaining from 9 to 13 in this chapter uh you know how we need to keep ourselves away separate ourselves from sin the importance of separation so that is described here now the question of uh, delivering such a person to satan uh, about that uh, you know cornelius alapide gives a, a explanation like this to deliver such a one to satan theophylact thinks that by these words paul actually excommunicates the fornicator those who are excommunicated are said to be delivered over to satan why because being ejected from the fellowship of christ and his church and being deprived of all its benefits benefits in the church like you know prayers suffrages sacrifices sacraments and the protection of god and of the care of pastors then what happens they are exposed to the tyranny and assaults of the devil whose rule is outside the church and who goes about against them more than before and impels them to every kind of evil that is uh, even ambrose and augustine and uh, also cornelius alapide uh, gives this explanation then for the um, word of god says uh, for the destruction of the flesh so that the devil may harass him with the bodily sickness wounds diseases that is flesh may be brought low and its vigor be destroyed that being thus humiliated he may learn wisdom he may repent and he will come back thus his soul will be saved so from these uh, so that uh, you know even theodorate chrysostom theophylact and anselm are of same uh, you know same messages they are giving same meaning uh, so from these fathers we gather um, though some deny it that the excommunicate you know one who is excommunicated they were formally handed over to the devil and also corporally vexed and possessed by him that they might learn to fear excommunication like see when ambrose had delivered a certain man to satan devil at that very moment seized him and began to tear him see you do not know how much protection we are getting from the church once you are out of communion only you will understand immediately evil will uh, evil will possess we are protected every moment every day even though we are not aware that's what uh, uh this uh, this you know uh, commentators you know these fathers of the church they are trying to explain so for this reason even sen uh, uh, he says in saint matthew jesus gave uh, to the apostles in chapter 10 of saint matthew so saint thomas aquinas is giving explanation for that to the apostles when he gave authority uh, power over unclean spirit both to expel them Uh, from and to admit them into men's bodies to vex them 
not only to cast out satan he also gave authority uh, to allow evil spirit for to come into certain people that is why when they are not uh, accepting you you can speak against them you can come away from them even you know uh, you know dropping off the dust from you know uh, your your feet the lord says and uh, their uh, situation will be so bad later the word of god says so it is about this uh, and now the spirit may be saved in the day of the lord jesus that the soul and mind gaining from this punishment uh, you know wisdom and renewal from this punishment they will the, they will get uh, wisdom may be saved in the day of judgment hence it appears that the end of excommunication should be borne in mind which is to cause excommunicate a shame and distress that he may be humiliated and uh, uh, ask to be received by can seek for pardon from god and the church the faithful therefore should pray secretly for him and endeavor to win him back to unity that is cornelius alapi they says that means the end of excommunication is not destruction but uh, the main aim is to get somehow that person back to the church that is the meaning praise the lord may almighty god bless you all father son and the holy spirit amen